Still today, there is one tool used by more data analysts than any other. Microsoft Excel is the go-to program for analysts everywhere. And today, in this video, I'm gonna break down the top three functions in Excel that every data analyst should and must know, along with some practical examples. Plus, check out in the links below for some more advanced tutorials on these specific functions. If you can master these, you're well on your way in joining the top analysts in the business. I'd love to hear if you think other functions deserve a spot on this list. Drop a comment below. Okay, so first up is the XLOOKUP function. This is a must know function for all data analysts, and it's the successor to the VLOOKUP function. In actual fact, I probably would recommend that you don't even learn the VLOOKUP function anymore and go straight to the XLOOKUP. It's way more versatile and has a whole bunch more features. What it can do is actually mix data from multiple data sets, or even just extract data very easily. So for example, we've got a sales team here that are selling products in the tech industry. But we're missing a field. We want to add the category to this table. And there's thousands of lines. So the easiest way to do this by using this lookup table here on the right hand side is using an xlookup function. So we'll start very quickly. Equals xlookup open brackets. What are we looking up? We're looking up keyboard. So cell E2, comma. Where are we looking it up? We're actually looking it up in the range from M3 to M18. I'm gonna lock those cells. And what do we wanna bring back? We wanna bring back the relating category in cells L3 to L18. I'm gonna lock those cells again. And when you press comma, there's an option here to say, if it's not found, if you cannot find keyboard in this list, what do you wanna bring back? It's an error capture, which isn't available in VLOOKUP. So I'm just gonna type in other, an other category. I'm gonna close the brackets and press enter. And now when you double click this down and copy the formula, you can see that the category has been filled in for every single product. Really handy, really easy, and simple to use. Now I'm gonna to go to the next phase of the XLOOKUP where you can use a combined or a multi-conditional lookup because we looked up just the product and category. But as you can see on this second table, there's a price that's related to each product, but it changes within color. So depending on the combination of product and color, it brings back a price. So let's do that and build this second XLOOKUP function with multiple conditions. So just after quantity, I'm gonna insert a new line or a new column and type in price. And now I'm gonna do this combination XLOOKUP function. And just before I start, don't forget there's more advanced tutorials I've got down in the description below. Just like this one here, where you can actually do a combination of a vertical and a horizontal lookup to get that cross point. This is a little bit more complex than the ones I'm showing you today, so go check them out. Okay, so let's go back to this other formula. Equals X lookup, open bracket. We're going to look up the keyboard again, so E2. Then I'm going to put the ampersand in there. This is and, and I'm also gonna look up the color of white, comma. Where am I gonna look up? What's the lookup array? Now the first array that relates to keyboard is going to be in cells M22 to M80, and I'm gonna lock those cells. And then I'll put that ampersand again because there's a second condition here. And the second range of cells is the color. So it's N22 to N80. And I'll lock those cells one more time and press comma. So now we're looking up those two ranges and what are we gonna bring back? We're going to bring back the price that's in the range of 022 to 080. Lock those cells one last time press comma, and just as we did last time, if it's not found, if there's an error, we can't find that combination, what do we want to bring back? I'm just going to bring back the value of zero. Close the brackets and press enter. And now you can see that the price is also listed for hundreds of lines of information. So it's a really handy formula to use. That's a little bit more complex, but it's a must know for data analysts. Tell me what you think.
Okay, so the second most popular used Excel function for data analysts might have surprised you, only because it's a quite simple formula or function to use. The SUMIF function is a very handy one to sum up information very quickly, and you can do multiple all at one time. So let's get started. You can see here we've got the products in column N. And what I want to do is I want to sum up the total value of all the sales that have happened in January for each of those products. And I want to do this really quickly. So what I'm firstly going to do is I'm going to multiply the quantity by the price because that gives us that total sales value. This isn't a summary formula, but it's something that's important in this particular instance. So I'll put the total value. And we'll just simply multiply the quantity of the product sold multiplied by the price. And there you go, the total value is $10, and we'll drag that formula down, and it copies it for each of the different sales lines. Now here's where the SUMIF formula comes in. Now I'm gonna put this in column P, equals SUMIF, open brackets. The range that we're gonna sum is the range of E, or the column E. Now you can select different or individual cell values or cell ranges, but I'm just gonna select the whole column E, comma. What's the criteria? We want the criteria to match desk lamp, 03, comma, and we want to bring back whatever relates to that desk lamp in column J, that total value. Close the brackets and press enter. And you can see the total value of desk lamp sold in January is 3,660. And you copy that down for all the other products. And there you go. That's how the sum if formula is used. Now, just like the XLOOKUP function, I'm going to level up. I'm going to show you another sum if function. It's called the sum if S function where there's multiple criteria. And then don't forget, in the description below, I'm going to add some more, even more advanced formula. And here's an example here, the sum if, if contains formula, where you partially match part of the word to bring back a sum. But before we get started with that one, let's start with this multiple conditional sum if formula, which is called the sum if s function. Now this is where we want to sum up the total values of the product and the color combined. So we'll start with the formula equals sum if s, open brackets. Now the sum range goes first in this instance. So we're gonna sum the range of column J again, comma. The criteria range is the first criteria we're gonna match, which is the product being column E, comma. And the criteria that has to match is the product, which is in N22. And then if we press comma again, we can just add more criteria. Now the second criteria is the color, column G, comma, and the criteria two is that it matches O22. We'll close that bracket, press enter, and there you go. You can see that gray desk lamps had a total value of $880. If we drag that down, all the formula is done with this multiple conditional sum if formula. And you can see all the desk lamps, I'll just hover over there and that sums up to 3,660, just like it did for the total desk lamps up here. So there you go, there's two examples of the sum if function, another very, very much used function for data analysts in Excel. Hope you enjoyed that one. And now we're going on to the final and most third most popular function data analysts use in Excel. Okay, so the third most popular Excel formula or function for data analysts is my personal favorite, it's the filter function. As you know, we've got this huge table of information for a tech sales company, and I wanna be able to filter this dynamically with a formula. So let's go to the second page and I'll show you how this is done. I'm gonna show you two examples, one simple one, one a little bit more advanced, and then don't forget in the description below, I've got a whole bunch more videos on the filter function, which are a lot more advanced. Check them out. So let's get started with the basic formula to get started, equals filter, open bracket, and what are we going to filter? We're going to filter this entire table of information. So I'm going to select the whole range from A2 to K1001, and what is the condition of the filter? Now the condition is I want to search for the salesperson name. So I'm going to select the range from D2 to D1001, and the condition is that something in that range equals what I've selected in cell D2. In this instance, Sophia Kim. I select comma again, 
And if we can't find Sophia Kim in this formula, what do we want to bring back? Not an error, let's bring back some sort of words. And this time I'm gonna say, not found. You can type in anything you like or reference a cell. And close the brackets. And now you can see that Sophia Kim's, all of her sales have come through to this formula. So if I change the salesperson name, pick someone else, let's say Oliver Wilson, it automatically dynamically changes to get all the sales of Oliver Wilson. So there's the first one, that's the first filter function. The next one I'm gonna show you is a little bit more difficult, and this is where we're gonna combine two formula, or two conditions. So you can see here underneath I've got category as well. So I just wanna find all the sales that Oliver Wilson has in the category of gaming. So let's update this formula. So you can see here we've got that condition where the salesperson range, sheet one, equals D2, which is the Oliver Wilson's name. So I'm just gonna put that in brackets. And when we wanna put a second condition in there, we have to use the multiply sign. So we'll type the multiply or the star and open up another bracket. So what's the second condition we want? We want the category to equal what's in that cell of D3. So we'll go back to the other table. We'll select the category from range F2 down to F1001 where it equals the category that we have in D3. So now we've got two conditions. The salesperson names equals Oliver and the category equals gaming. And if that doesn't appear, if that combination doesn't appear, we're gonna bring back the words not found. So let's press enter. And you can see that we've got two instances where gaming has been sold by Oliver Wilson. Now we can change any of these, this is very dynamic. Change it back to Sophia Patel. Change the category to something else that was there. Let's check it out, maybe hardware. And you can see that it changes automatically. Okay, so there you go. They're the three most popular formula in Excel for data analysts. I think you should practice and try them as much as you can. Please, again, let me know in the comments below if you think something else should be on this list. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.